Hello, and welcome to the Void Acoustics walkthroughs for the BIOS Amplifier control software. In this session, we will be covering the config tab within the LiveSkin environment. Once amplifiers and loudspeakers have been added and linked in the design tab, configuration can be continued by navigating to the config tab along the bottom left of the screen. The first page you will land on is the IP menu, which displays whether the amplifiers are set to DHCP or static IP, along with their IP address. Clicking on the amplifier you would like to configure will bring up the options. If you would like to leave the amplifiers in DHCP mode, then no further configuration is required, as this is the default state. If you would like to assign a static IP address to the amplifier, click on the drop-down menu under Select Mode, then press Static. Enter the IP address details, and then finally click Apply to confirm the settings. Note that it is possible to select multiple amplifiers simultaneously and enter a starting IP and ending IP to automatically apply sequential addresses. The next tab is the Preset tab. Selecting a speaker displays the current preset loaded along with any additional manufacturer EQ where available, such as coupling filters for multiple elements of ArcLine 8. Clicking on the Application drop-down list will display the other presets available for the product and allow the preset to be changed during the workflow without having to go back to the Design tab, deleting and then adding a new loudspeaker. It is also possible to select multiple instances of the same loudspeaker to change presets simultaneously. The next tab allows for configuration of the signal input to the amplifiers for both channel and amp settings. The first section we will look at are the channel settings. Selecting an amplifier channel will show the priorities in case of signal failure, the mode of the backup strategy, and the status of the user threshold. The user threshold is particularly useful if there is a small amount of noise on an analog channel, as placing the threshold above this level will avoid any false triggers. In the case of this setup, channel 1 is configured to have Dante input 1 as the priority channel, backing up to analog channel 1 in case of disruption or dropout of the Dante stream. This is the default setup for the amplifiers. If you are only using analog inputs, there is no need to reconfigure this page, as without the presence of a Dante signal, the amplifier will automatically back up to the analog signal. Clicking on the priorities boxes will allow for repatching of the inputs if desired. Remember when patching Dante sources directly within Armonia that the Dante network needs to be enabled within the Communication Manager. Once the channel settings have been configured, click on the AMP settings icon, then the amplifier you would like to configure. In this section, you can alter the trim level between the analog and digital signals along with the delay. Should your priority signal drop out for any reason, this will ensure that the level and timing of your backup signal is the same, allowing for a seamless transition. The next tab is the Matrix tab, which allows for configuration of input signals to be sent to different loudspeakers. Selecting a loudspeaker will display the current routing of the input signal being fed to it. In this case, where the loudspeaker is split across two amplifiers, it is possible to configure both the amplifier channels at once, assuming that the same analog input is split across the two amplifiers. Multiple signals can be fed to a single loudspeaker, for example sending a mono-summed mix to a low-frequency enclosure. The next tab allows for compensation of cable runs through virtual altering of the amplifier's damping factor. This feature is only available for low-frequency enclosures, as enabling the damping factor places a 400Hz low-pass filter on the output. Clicking on the loudspeaker will bring up the options. You can either use the cable resistance calculator to enter the cable length and diameter to calculate the nominal resistance of the cable run, or use the slider to add or decrease resistance. This will have a subtle effect on the tonality of the loudspeaker by virtually altering the damping factor of the amplifier. Press on Enable to engage the damping compensation. The final tab under Config is the Mains tab. This will display the configuration of the main supply, such as single phase, biphase, or three phase, the voltage being supplied to the amplifier, and finally the current draw of the amplifier. 
Clicking on an amplifier will bring up the options for limiting the current capable of being drawn by the amplifier. This is configured by either the slider or directly typing the desired maximum current draw. Limiting the current draw will reduce amplifier performance. However, if you are connecting to a circuit that you know is rated lower than the maximum current draw of the amplifier, it is preferable to the power tripping during the show. If you have any questions or need further guidance, please feel free to email support at voidacoustics.com or phone the office on plus four four one two zero two treble six double zero six, where either myself or another member of the team will be happy to help. Thank you for watching.